unique New York. The arsonist has oddly shaped feet. The arsonist. Hey, hey, we're recording. Oh, yeah. No, I know because now how Zoom does it, there's this big thing that comes on the screen and says, you are now recording. Oh. And so. So you can stop preparing because everyone can I, hear you. Now. I, I still think, I think uh, taking keys from the greats, from the great mentors of our time mm. is, is something that we should highlight. Ron Burgundy is one of those great mentors, and so I'd like to use his uh, his pregame, uh, pre-game mechanism ritual. to uh, yeah to get it going. He is a to great get it mentor. going. He is he a great, is a great mentor. mentor to <laughs> all, <laughs> but only in the first movie. The second one was really dumb. First one, Ron Burgundy, classic, yeah. vintage yeah. Ron Burgundy. So uh, well, we uh, want to talk about today? Yeah. Good morning, friend. How are you? I'm good, man. Good. Uh, I'm hoping, um, so it's 4.45 in the morning. And I'm, I'm hoping my son doesn't come down because I heard him I heard him uh, crying upstairs. And I'm hoping my wife um, handles that, you know? Handle that. Handle that. Yeah. Handle, handle that, that, wifey. Handle that kid. Yeah. <laughs> Punk kids crying and yeah, why and, are they, why are they waking up, man? I don't know, man. Uh, my, so, hey, um, I got a, I got a dad joke for you. My, my my daughter told me this last night while we were doing bath time. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of it now. Uh, I had it on the tip of my tongue. Um, it's a good it's a good start. You, you like that? Where mm-hmm. where can you find? A dog with no legs. I don't know. The last place you left it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know that that doesn't really highlight the indomitable will of a dog to wiggle his way to a bowl of food or something along those lines. Sure, sure. You've obviously never had labs before. Yeah, you have. Oh, I, trigger, oh, I have. trigger. Yeah, trigger. I had two labs. Um, uh, I got one. What you got? Uh, why are there no knock knock jokes about America? Why? Because freedom rings. Oh snap! America, America. It's good, man. I bet you don't know where I store all these jokes. Where? In my database. <laughs> good man i like that one yeah good stuff man okay so i do think the ron burgundy comment though was a little bit um uh related to what we're going to talk about today when we talk about mentors where you Mm -hmm. get them how you get them Uh, we're not really actually focused on mentors but um i'm kind of excited about today because we decided we're going to discuss just you and me uh, some of the things we're reading as much as we talk, I don't know all the books you're reading. I don't think you know the books I'm reading and, and some of the lessons learned uh, from those books. But but it's really, most importantly, it's the whole concept of continued education, what that really means in, in applying that in action. Uh, just a couple examples of, of what we're you know doing at that. And, and really, uh, to encourage all of our listeners that it's not too ever too early to start um, and, and quite frankly, if you're not started yet, it's too late. It's not too late, but you're, you're late, right? You, you're always late. If you haven't started this, this journey of reading, seeking out, filling your mind with, um, whether it's mentorship or ideas on the things that you're passionate about, um, you know, cause there's no shortage of, of ways to self-educate or continued, continued and self-education. And, and really what's most important is, taking those things and putting them into action, right? And what does that mean? And how are we putting it into action? And what does that look like? So uh, excited about excited about uh, chit-chatting about this and hearing some of your thoughts on on books and things that you're doing. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's, it's funny. Um, now that we're sitting here talking about it, something that uh, came up last night, um, I was I was asked to be a guest uh, on, on a, a webinar that one of our War Room member, um, members run. Aaron Goins so of the all-in-one real estate. Um, he does one every Thursday and, and it's basically just like a, a Q and a session. And so I came on and one of the questions that was asked to me was, 
you know, who, who are your mentors and who are you um, seeking guidance from? And, and I kind of had to think about that for a second. Um, and we, and we definitely have, you know, a few mentors, uh, like, you know, individual mentors that have helped us along the way, um, at, at different stages, uh, in time. Um, but, but I think like the biggest mentor are, are, are those that have just written these books, you know, that are constant, that I'm constantly, um, reading new books and seeking guidance, um, from, from books, from podcasts, from webinars, from audio books, um, and then obviously like our network of individuals and people and reaching out and asking questions and, 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 you know, asking for help. But my answer was I, I, books, like books is probably one of my biggest mentors. Um, and then, you know, podcasts as well. Um, so, I mean, I think, um, and, and I think you and I both, you were, you've always kind of been a reader. Um, but I, I think for a long time, even like in college, you were reading more of like um, fiction stuff, weren't you? Um, yeah. And, um, and I had actually gotten away from that and now I've gone more towards that N- not towards it. Uh, like the preponderance of the books I read are not fiction. Um, they're nonfiction, but, uh, I've really been, you know, and I only highlight this and we've talked about this before, but the, the fiction aspect, and I talked about this and we'll talk about this here shortly about my conversation with the midshipman, but, but the, when, when you read, fiction it also like hypothetically a war book or a business book uh, on you know a fiction book that that brings up and presents ideas that are are realistic but it also forces you to be in a place where you are um where you are making decisions right what would i do in this situation and i think that's an invaluable exercise you know it's like when you're as a pilot when you you know blue chair it um, you're going through scenarios and you have your checklist and, you know, uh, clean sheet, clean, or uh, clean sheet, check, flutter, flip, flip, lock, whatever, all the things that you guys do. And you're still remember that? all the, That's I don't know why that like just came out of, uh, uh, where that came from. But, um, the, the fact that, you know, you're putting yourself in situations and you're just, you're saying, okay, what would I do in this emergency situation? What would I do in this landing? What would I do in this, whatever. Well, fiction enables you to do the same thing. It helps you to have um, not only go through the riches of character development and reading a book, but it's like, okay, well, what would I do if this was, if I was encountered this thing? And even that in, in and of itself is, is some mentorship. It, it forces you to um, put yourself in situations in blue chair life, right? And, and I think that, that, so I did do a lot of that because it was assigned readings and, but, but it did give a, a creativity and, and um, uh, a richness that that I don't is not inherent in who I am, I don't think. Uh, but it but it feeds that. And then of course we've just shifted more towards, uh, you know, um, some help, some self help, but also some business, some uh, you know, uh, nonfiction books that are that are beneficial for you know topically for the things that we're doing, whether it's leadership our business yeah. or what that looks like. So, um, and, right. I, and I'd say that there's a, a good little mix now. And what's, what's also cool is I think if you look at a book, you enjoy it, look at the references or the bibliography and, and or like some of the books that, that the author potentially references in their book. And you can start chain reading and you get to a different place. That's something that just recently I've, uh, you know, I've started reading a couple of books that were, are not typical for me at all. Yeah. they've been really insightful and we'll get into that as well yeah yeah for sure uh, yeah I, I actually have a problem with that and i have a problem also with like if i'm listening to a podcast and they mention a book you know i'll like jot it down and then i'll like go yeah. i'll go order it like i literally have like a stack of books here in the corner we don't have I don't, my office doesn't have bookshelves and so my wife gets mad at me because i like just order books all the time and like the stack of books just like sits in the corner and she's like so funny you can never read those yeah, I got a stack. I got a little stack behind me. There's a stack, a little stack up there. There's <laughs> one in my room. Um, and then we have a bookshelf and there's a stack there. And then, uh, you know, for the for our listeners that know Dave Perez, as you know, him, dude is a huge reader. So he's got his little stack. So then I'm like, oh, these are, oh. you know, yeah. we're looking through each other's yeah. books. And so there's stacks everywhere, man. I need to get that under control, too. Yeah, but, man. Hey, but it's but stacks of books are better than uh, stacks of, of you know, 
garbage that that you're you have. There are other alternatives that you could put in your yeah. brain and you can feed yourself with that that I think uh, stacks of books are, are probably a, a good alternative. Yeah. For this. Well, one one of the books um, that, uh, that I think we should kind of start with, and I haven't finished it yet, um, and I'm not going to talk about it a lot because uh, we're going to have this author um, on on our podcast. Um, but it was a it was a book that I heard on a podcast, um, and and I reached out to her and I was like, hey, we got to have you on, you know, this you fit right into uh, you know our our, our wheelhouse, and um, but it's. And the, the main topic is what I want to talk when I want to talk about it, but it's called wisdom based business from Hannah Stoltz. And, and she's a veteran and she's now a, um, a uh, she has a PhD and she's um, a professor at a couple different uh, colleges. Um, but the, the, the main, you know, theory here is, uh, you know, she, she kind of goes back to biblical days where, where King Solomon was at reign and, you know, King Solomon was uh, a very wise individual, very wealthy individual, and um, he had a he had a dream, um, and God came to him in his dream, and, and God basically said, like, "Hey, what what do you want?" And and it's interesting his response. You know, his response was not, you know, I, I want riches, I want wealth, I want money, I want all these pleasures. Uh, his response was. I want wisdom. And he was seeking wisdom. Um, And because of that, God was thrilled and God was happy with him. Um, And not only did he give him wisdom, but he gave him everything else that he could ever dream for. Um, And and so that, like that, that precedence like is, is, is spot on to where, you know, we are in our lives is just constantly seeking wisdom, constantly, uh, trying to better ourselves through self-education, um, and and my my hope, and I know your hope is too, is is from that better others and, and help others um, with that same education, and that's part of the reason why we started this podcast is to help others and serve others, and um, you know try to pass on that wisdom to others that we've learned along the way. So, um, yeah, man. No, I think that's huge, and and you know, there's so many things about the the story of King Solomon that I that I love. Uh, you know, when you look at the beginnings of King Solomon, who he was, uh, you know, what, uh, you know, who was King Solomon? Well, he was the the child of King David and Bathsheba, right? Yeah. And so you look at the beginnings and how God can use even, um, you know, because for those that know the story of Bathsheba or, or don't, I mean, that was a, an adulterous murderous, yeah. uh, relation or a re- adulterous relationship that was born out of King David willfully effectively murdering her husband because he saw her bathing on the roof and, and, and had it just, he could not control himself. And that's where King Solomon came from. So that's, that's his, his lineage. And, and, you know, from that, God raised this, you know, this amazing King of Israel. And, and I think the, you know, also, like you said, when he, when, when he was given the opportunity to pick something, you know, he chose wisely, (laughs) he chose right, he chose correctly and God blessed it. Right. And God said, because you didn't choose these other things, these things also will be, will be, uh, uh, blessed to you. And, and, and that whole idea of, of wisdom, I think is, is so key because you know a lot of things that stick out to me like in the proverbs and and reading are are the the uh proclamation that you should desire wisdom you should seek wisdom wisdom is more valuable than silver and gold there's all these different um you know especially through the proverbs there's all these different uh just exhortations and, and, and encouragements to seek wisdom and, and what that means. And, and it's a journey, right? So I love how you said that. And, and awesome, awesome book. I can't wait to have her on. Can't wait to dig into that book. Uh, but if you don't mind, as you were talking and I was fully listening, but I was also thinking, I would love for you to kind of take your, the, the stack of books that you're currently reading and, and just walk me through like what that, how those, how those plug into your day and what, how they feed your battle rhythm? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. Um, so, uh, you know, I, so it's I, a great question, Stu. It's a freaking great question. 
I try, I, so I, I try to make time and, and on my calendar, on, on my scheduled, you know, kind of time blocking events, uh, I schedule time in the evening uh, to read books. Uh, you know, typically our, our, our uh, battle rhythm is, um, you know, I come home from work, hang out with the kids, I, put the, I try to put the phone away, do dinner, do, um, you know, play time, hang out, and then kind of do bath time and, and bedtime. And uh, we read books with my family, like my kids, like we read books every single night uh, with them, get them down. And then I typically will go and into my bedroom and have uh, kind of my own quiet time and, and read my own books. So kind of reading is, is the, the end part of my day. But oftentimes um, I'm reading a book that I really enjoy and, and I'll get up and uh, I'll continue to read in the mornings as a part of my morning routine. Um, you know, I kind of do the, the Miracle Morning um, stuff, which is another great book um, that I have read and learned and took action on, you know, the steps of the Miracle Morning, the savers. Um, and, and a part of that is reading. So I'll, I'll typically continue to read and it's different every day. And kind of like what Brianna Greenspan talked about in hers, like her morning routine kind of changes um, as you know what she's called upon to do. Um, but I'll typically continue to read. And, um, you know, a lot of times I'll like highlight, take notes, stars, um, everything in my book. And um, a lot of that, when I'll, when I'll read stuff like that, it, it kind of goes into my brain of, of like taking action on some of these things. Um, and I think that's really, really important is, um, you know, I think as you continue to be a, a reader and continue to grow uh, in your reading journey, you'll find that um, a lot of the stuff kind of gets stuck in the back of your brain. And I want you to talk about that a little bit with, with your, you know, talk with the midshipmen um, that you had, but um, stuff comes up and then like we have conversations with people and you're like, oh yeah, I read a book about that. Let's talk about that. And let's, let's kind of, um, reinvigorate that, that learning, um, and take action on that. Um, so, you know, uh, I think that answers your question. Um, yeah. And, and I, and because I know you is kind of a leading question and, and, uh, uh, I think what's important is it's built into your day, right? So like yeah. for me every morning, same thing, I open up my Bible app and, and I know that you're doing the same. So we're on the same reading plan, right? Yeah. So we're both reading, uh, the New Testament, the chronological, a reading plan that, that has a chronological order of the New Testament. Yep. And so like, I know that you're reading that every morning when you get up and, and that's something that I'm reading. We're holding each other accountable to that. And so that's like a 185 day plan. I think something like that. Yep. So that that's, you know, it's very intentional. You wake up in the morning. That's something that one first it's, thing, it's a first thing. It's a decision and it's intentional and there's accountability to it. Right. Right. And then from there, you, you and I kind of diverge, you know, you do you doing things in the morning and then I, you know, I tend to do, um, I have my, my kind of order of things, get in the car, listen to a, a Rick Warren podcast every morning. And then I put on an audio book for the rest of the drive and, and what that book is, is, you know, it varies. And right now, you know, we can get into that in a couple of minutes, but, um, and, and then during the day, I have an hour block, 12 to one, where most people eat lunch. I go out to my car. Um, and maybe I'll take my lunch or whatever, or I'll go outside and I'll have a book. I'll be reading that book. And right now that book is life in there. Hmm. Different book from what I listen to in the morning and on my drive home, different book than I read, you know, um, uh, before heading into work. But, but these are times that are set aside. And my goal is to get to like, you know, uh, Mattis, uh, Stravitas, um, uh, Warren Buffett levels of like four hours of reading a day. Like these guys read four to six hours a day. And they're, they, they, they are influencers, right? Yeah. And they are, they're hugely important in whatever industry, whether it's a military or investing or whatever they do. And, and, and there's a commonality when you look at that, that people just read. Some of these people just read and read and read. There's got to be something to that, right? And, and there is something to that. Yeah. Uh, it's not just rhetorical. But, but I'd love to get to that spot in, in where I'm doing that much reading uh, in a day because – I do believe that that focus time really helps you build and, and puts things in your head that would never be, they just wouldn't be there. And you don't give yourself time for. So yeah. um, that, that was really the, the reason why I was asking that question. Cause I know you're very intentional with your reading and what's, what's interesting is our kids pick up on what we do. Right. Mm. And Jakey, I don't know when I was talking to you yesterday, driving him to jujitsu, I kept telling him like, dude, <laughs> get off your book. Like 
dude, like get off the book, get off the yeah. book. Yeah. He's just like, he, he's a very focused kid on like on very specific things. And dude, he's just been tearing books up and, and uh, it's been cool to see sometimes annoying. Cause he won't like, he literally, we can't get him to close the book to brush his teeth. I'm like, dude, you have to just close the book to, to brush your teeth. But, <laughs> yeah. but I pray, dude, I pray that that's built into him and he can start earlier than I ever did on this journey because this is where the true education is. Right. And yep. College is important. School is important, of course, but these things, like I've learned so much through the continued education stuff. Um, and, and you never know when it's going to come back, you know, and, and that's kind of to the point of the, the midshipman conversation I had the other day is I had a bunch of middies from the Academy doing a summer cruise cyber thing. And, and I think there's a typical, uh, brief that they get from CEOs, you know, and they come in and they talk about their command and all this stuff. And I was like, no, I, that's, I'm not going to do that because I, I don't even know if they're going to come to my command. Who cares? They're not going to remember. Right. I'll, I'm going to forget the specifics of, of the CEOs that sit right next to me on their commands. I don't, I don't care. I want to know who they are. The CEOs are as people. And I want to know what they're doing from a leadership perspective to make whatever command they're in better. Right. And right. so I approached it that way. And went in there and is zero agenda. What are they, what are they going to give me? I mean, they 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 have a lot to offer and they're super smart, but they're not going to. If they read or don't read or listen or, or don't listen, it's not going to impact. You know, they're not part of the command. It's not going to impact me. So I just went in and talked about. I focus on a few things. I asked them to introduce themselves and say what they're reading. And so they each went around to where they're from and what they're reading, and then we started that conversation. We got in a conversation starting from there. Right. And it was insightful to hear what they're reading. Um, it was, it was really cool, but what was even more cool was I'd read most of the books mm. and, and it's not that you're like a smart guy and all this kind of stuff. That's not the point, but, but you could, I could connect with them in the book that they're reading. Right. Yeah. I could say, Hey, have you got to the part where blah, blah, blah. And you could see them get excited. Yeah. And I love this, that and it just completely started a conversation because I had a data, a database of, <laughs> ha, ha, boom, of, um, of things that I had read and it enabled us to connect at an even deeper level. And then for us to get to know each other a little bit more. And, and so I focused on what they're reading, talked about some leadership and talked about investment and investment in yourself and investments like practical investments as a, you know, coming out as an ensign, told them all not to spend their, <laughs> their, uh, career started on yeah and, and to seek investments and one of them was like yeah i bought a car already and we're like ah oh, everybody's clowning it my you know and, and but it was, was good me. it was yeah right me me too it was an awesome truck but all that being said what it also did is we were able to i was able to offer them different thoughts and ideas that weren't mine i was offered i was able to give them things that i had gained from from continuing education and i think the conversation was fruitful for them and for me because it, it was beyond the whole idea of this is cyber strike activity 63. I am the commanding officer. You don't care who I am because I'm just an old 05 and you're on a summer <laughs> cruise and you don't really give two rips about right. what I do. But <laughs> the books stuck, the conversations about how to be a better leader stuck, um, not my ideas. And, and some of the, the concepts stuck. I know it did because you could see it in their faces, right? Because we did it in person. You know, we were able to do it in person. I was able to look in their eyes. And some of them were just like engaged. They yeah. wanted to like talk. And, and we, I went over like, I'm sure you're so shocked, but I went over like 30 minutes, right? I think I had a 45-minute block and I was way over time. But, but there were no complaints about it because we had a great conversation. Yeah. Yeah. That reminds me of um, the... When you when you gave uh, the midshipmen uh, rich dad poor dad and then they were taking pictures of them like reading it in the halls and, and passing it around. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I did it the same for some Air Force Academy uh, cadets and uh, that was that was pretty cool. And dude, in all honesty, man, and some of the things we talked about is you know we talked about finances. Yeah, and we highlighted in my career path the the number one thing. So you have to have a clearance. Right. Like you have to have a clearance to walk into the building where I work yeah. or any building like it. What do you think the number one thing is that gets people gets people's clearance revoked? 
Yeah, it's finances. Finances, dude. Hundred yeah. percent. Like not even, not even uh, comparable to anything else. It's finance because because the government and the folks that do these clearances know that you're most vulnerable when your finances aren't in order. They know that for blackmail, for selling secret, like whatever it is, that's when you're most vulnerable. So they'll, they'll, they'll snatch up your clearance because they are anticipating you being a victim because your finances aren't in order. And so there's that. And then what's the, one of the, if not the top reason, one of the top two reasons for divorce. Finances. Finances, dude. Finances. And so you take these two huge things in your life. Well, if your finances are, finances are in order, what kind of leader can you be? If you can free that part of your brain up, because dude, I, like in our business, and even as we're looking at transition, I think about finances all the time. Mm-hmm. Not because I want to be a billionaire or anything like that, but it's because how do I achieve the goals I want to achieve so that we can be debt free and, and that part of my mind turns off and I can focus it somewhere else. It's, it's, good huge, transition. Man. it's a good transition into uh, one of the books that you're currently reading and I read and we also had uh, the author of on our podcast. It's true. Very good transition. Which, which is, which is, da, 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 da. Life, and Life and Air. Awesome book. Yeah. Awesome book. Yeah, dude, I think um, as I'm reading, I'm like, man, I know Stu has read this, but I, I think you need to reread it. It, it is so... yeah. Because I, and the reason I say that is because I want to, that's probably going to be a staple. Um, there, there's so much good stuff in there. And it's so, it seems so simple. And even in the book highlights, it's very simple. It's not easy. And, and it really challenges conventional thinking and the American dream and, and debt. It, it challenges the, the ideas behind all of that stuff. And I'll tell you, man, it really resonates and, and I'm like super convicted reading that book. Yeah. Well, yeah. And it even challenges, I mean, it challenges the mindset of, of a lot of us in uh, like in our, in our real estate war room mastermind, like um, it challenges uh, you know, there's, there's uh there's like the, the Dave Ramsey way of thinking. There's the Robert Kiyosaki way of thinking. Um, and then there's the life and air way of thinking. I think it's kind of somewhere in between there, but like, you know, uh, so, so many people within our network are, are all about like using debt, using leverage, um, and, you know, to, to grow your wealth. And, um, you're right. Like that life in our book, it, it challenges your, your thinking, your thought process on, on what's, what's most important. Like what is most important in your life, you know, to be a millionaire or to be a life in air? Yeah. And, and I think even the, you know, and there's even more depth to all that, right? Cause you can be both. Yeah. But, but there's also the challenge, the challenges, the conventional thought of what is a millionaire? Like if you're, if your net worth is a billion dollars because you own, you know, a billion dollars of assets, um, but your cash flow is $7,000 a month. Like, I, I mean, and is that, is that realistic? Well, probably not. But, but it's also not necessarily not realistic. If you have, you know, uh, seven hundred thousand, uh, seven hundred million dollars of debt, and a net worth of a billion, well, you know, there's a three hundred million dollar gap there. But you're still not. That's only if you sell the other seven hundred million dollars of assets, right? Like people look at these huge numbers and they're astronomical and. And how you leverage it, yes, but at some point, that seven hundred million dollars is going to come due. At yeah. some point, right? Okay. Like it, it doesn't, it doesn't go away. And even though there's the, all these these ways that you can, um, you know, that there's tax benefits and and strategies to defer taxes and to defer these different things and to move it and ten thirty one and exchange all these different stuff, right? All these different ways to to leverage. At some point, it's going to come due. But but more importantly, is is not that. It's how much time are you thinking about that debt, and how much time are you dedicating your life to jobs or working that are paying that debt, and not necessarily living off of the abundance of the of the delta or having a way or 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 
like when when do you stop acquiring yeah at what point do you do that and i think the the book is really and why we're going to probably go to a life in your conference here in september is or at least you know i'm for sure going to go and and if your calendar permits but it's to help under, to help create the vision that that drives those decisions and helps you decide when is enough enough or what, what does more look like or what does less look like or what is, you know, what are your goals? And I think that's what the book is so rich in. It's not just a bashing on debt per se um, or leverage, but if, but it makes you think, okay, what, what is the cost? What's the true cost of that debt? Am I working 80 hours a week at a job because the debt mandates that and most people are most people are because they bought the new car they bought the new house the bigger house you know they're like that fish in a bowl right well when you get the bigger bowl what does the fish do it grows bigger to 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 the bowl size right and so are you that fish and you're just going to keep getting bigger and bigger because your bowl is bigger or are you going to figure out what you really want and need and, and live off the abundance of, of, of that. It's, it's interesting, man. It's a great book. It's, it's very challenging. And even from our business, right? It's teaching us like, where do we want to be and how do we want to scale the idea of a completely debt-free business yeah. is amazing. Awesome. And, and so is that, is that achievable? Well, yeah, unless you, it's always more, right? And then what does that look like? So, I don't know, dude. It's uh, it, it's it, that book has been hitting me right in the, right in the heart. <laughs> it's good. Punch you right in your crooked nose, man. Why do we have to like? Why do we have to do these things? Why do we have to be mean to each other? <laughs> I never, I never make fun of you. It's it's all out of love. Mm-hmm. It's all just out of love. Speaking of another book um, that uh, I read recently. Um, that you also need to read. I know you haven't yet. Is is, uh, is ego is the enemy by Ryan Holiday. Yeah. Um, that also uh, challenges uh, you know this this entrepreneurial journey, this path, this this business um, journey that we're on. And um, you know it, it talks about uh, well the ego being the enemy, um, and. You know, there's there's some key point. I mean, the book is awesome, and there's so many quotable, um, you know, uh, sentences and phrases that he that he uh, discusses in the book. But you know, just a few that kind of that uh, hit me um, as uh, you know we're continuing this path on our um, journey of of you know growing our business and becoming successful is this innocent climb to success. And um, a lot of people fail, a lot of uh, leaders, a lot of uh, sports teams, a lot of business owners fail because they allow this innocent, innocent climb of, of success to, to turn into the disease of me. And he, 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 the book, the chapter is called The Disease of Me. And um, there's, this, there's this pivot point where, you know, you become so successful and he talks about like NBA teams, how you know, there's this, there's this team, they're all kind of like joined together. They, they have a mission, you know, they, they join this mission together and they're working on that. And then they reach that, that, you know, the NBA championship and they become great. And there's these individual players. And then this disease of me starts and it's like me, 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 I, we did this because of me, you know, the, um, the, the players that you hear of that are kind of just egotistical. Um, and then it all falls apart every single time it happens every single time uh, when it, when you get to this point where, um, it's, it's all about me, it's because what I did, right. Um, things start to fall apart. And, and so it really made, made me think about like, all right, how, how do, how do we not allow that to happen? Um, and what are the action steps that you can do to continue to, in your mind, tell yourself, um, it's not about me. It's not about like who I am. And there's this other strategy that talks about called the canvas strategy where, and, and I mentioned it to about uh, Adam Whitney when we had him on, um, but there's just this idea of like, what what would it look like if if you ran a business, if you ran your life where everything you did uh, was to help others, and and like every every like social media post, every action step you did 
it was not about bettering yourself, but it was about bettering others. And if you, if you uh, put this blank canvas up for other people to paint on, that in turn will be so much uh, more fruitful for you in the long run than uh, always just going after uh, what, what helps you. And so, you know, if you, if you turn that into a, a business strategy, man, I think, I think there's uh, so much goodness in that. Um, so that, that uh, really makes me think about like the things that I'm doing every single day and the action steps that I'm taking and, and continuing to have that in the back of my mind, like, don't let it get to the disease of me, put that canvas strategy out there, you know? Um, and uh, so, man, it, it's such a good book. It's such a good book. Yeah, dude. I, I think, well, a couple thoughts on that one. Uh, I think that's amazing, right? I think there's, you know, when you, take a book like that, you read it and you implement it like that. That's, that's, that's our, that's kind of the, the, uh, the bluff for us, right? The, the bottom line up front is except we're like 40 minutes in, but it's, it's to you're reading things, which in, in and of itself is, is taking an action. I guess it's relatively passive, but you're reading things and then you're implementing. And one of the things that I love about these books is th some of those quotes. And I like how you struggle because you said, quotable uh, uh, and in my mind i'm like quotable quotes yeah but anyways um <laughs> yeah. allow, allow myself to introduce myself uh but the but the idea that those things wouldn't like you wouldn't have been exposed to them if you didn't read that book and that's the that's the power of of, of reading these books and, and diving in and, and education is that there's ideas or concepts that you maybe inherently kind of feel like this book aligns with your, uh, your foundations, but, but in, but it, it gives you words to, to put to actions and ideas. Right. And, and so this ego is enemy. A lot of the things that you, you're like, Hey man, I just read this awesome thing and, and how it applied to our business. And we're like, okay, we have to take action on that. Like we have to implement that. We have to always be thinking about, you know, this idea of, of humility and, and shining and have shining towards others. And, and like when we, we talked to uh, different folks, uh, who was it that gave us the, the no agenda? I don't, uh, um, it was a no agenda conversations. It was one of our Whitney. podcasts now, but it was, it was way, it was, it was way back. Uh, we were oh. we had a conversation about, you know, I just come into things without an agenda and that, Oh, I think it was a like conversation maybe with, with John or, or somebody. I don't remember. Um, but, yeah. but it's stuck and it's, and it's something that I use all the time. Now I'm like, Hey, I have no agenda here. I just want to have a conversation and like, you know, this is something that I'm thinking and here you go, you can have it for free. Um, you know, and, and if we can do business, let's do business. If not like, Hey, let's, let's have a beer. But, but that whole idea comes from something that I didn't really necessarily think about, but it's been now been implemented in our lives. How often do we use the um, you know, you show me your checkbook and your calendar and I'll show you what's important to you, right? Like these little things that, that are just, they're words that you now can reference back to, like the importance of memorizing the Bible. Well, that's the whole point is that when you're in a moment of temptation or weakness or whatever, you're like, I need to draw from something. You can draw from a verse that gives you the power to push through or whatever it is. And, and so I think that's the, and, and so, and, and, and some people may have an issue with this next comment, but I mean, it is what it is. My opinion but I reject the idea of this whole speed reading thing and, and to read books, to read books, right? This, I'm going to read 350 books this year because I took this class and I can read a book in, in an hour. Okay. Like, yeah. that's cool. I guess that's maybe impressive to some people that you read 350 books, but like, what did you get from that book? Like, what action yeah. are you taking? And I would argue that unless you're like, there are probably geniuses out there that can read in an hour and just, you know, they have a photographic memory and they can draw from those things. But the average human being, uh, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know if that's really um, realistic, but the richness of sitting in a book and taking and implementing those thoughts and, and turning them into actions, I think is a real, is a real key. And, and what we really think is, is most important, right. Is, is you take these ideas that aren't your own, and you, you, uh, you know, you, you leverage them. I'm reading this book right now. Um, Steve jobs. Now I'm not a techie dude. Steve jobs has never been of interest to me. I've not watched the movies, but 
but it's kind of that chain reading thing. I read a book uh, based on a recommendation from Jay Money, uh, one of our, our storehouse, our marketing guy. And, and uh, he, he said, hey, read the, role, the Ride of a Lifetime. It's the story of Robert Iger, the Disney CEO, the last Disney CEO. I think he's still, is he still currently? He may still have a contract up through this year, next year. But really good book. But he talks a lot about Steve Jobs. I had no idea Steve Jobs was like a Pixar guy and the, the fight between Disney and Pixar. and like. All, but the business side of that, fascinating. I completely recommend that book. But because of his, that book, I, I was like, well, I want to know a little bit about Steve Jobs. And I, I have gained a ton just reading these two books. But one of the things that, that uh, uh, I guess a quote attributed to Picasso is good artists borrow great artists steal. And, and to be great, you know, stealing some of these ideas, there's nothing wrong with that. What do we say in the military? Uh, plagiarism, plagiarism is the highest form of flattery or whatever. Flattery, yeah. And, and so I think there's this, these the, the idea of going into a book knowing that my intent here is to learn to take action is, is really key and i think you have to be intentional about that as you dive into these things i just read extreme ownership as well and i went into that book saying okay we need to turn our business into this business these guys seem pretty awesome their stories are really cool but there's a lot of really practical advice in there prioritize and execute like that's from that book it just stuck right i think it's the name of a chapter discipline equals freedom like these things that come from it and i'm like okay how do i implement those things and, and we've done that right we're taking action and we'll continue to do that but just the the um the ability to take those things put words to them and take action and i have to read that book now because you quote it so many times and and it's already made an impact in our business and how we consider it and hopefully humbles you a little bit because that whole me thing like that's all you ever do is highlight oh well, i did this and Today I blah and I analyzed the deal and I uh, talked to a client. Blah, you know. Well, I mean? so it, it does. It does make me continue to always think about like what, what I'm. You know, social media, which is you know your favorite. Like, what what are you posting? You know, are, are you posting? Hey, we just closed on our next hundred unit apartment complex. Look at us. You know, or or is it? Hey, look at these other people doing these awesome things. Or, you know, and even when we plug our own podcast, I, you know, I, I try to do it in a way that like, hey, look at this other person. Look at, let's highlight our guest of, of what, and that's why I love our podcast, man. Like, I love having our guests on to do, like talk about how awesome, you know, what, what they're doing and, and like how awesome they are. And, um, you know, to me, that's a lot of fun is, is just serving others, right? And um, it, it's always in the back of my mind now of like, what? what is this going to look like to somebody else when I post this? Is it just highlighting that we sold another turnkey property? And I used to do that. You're right. I totally like, used to, Hey, look at this property that we made for somebody else. It was awesome. Look at us. Right. But I've really tried to change uh, the way, the way that looks. Um, I hope, I'm hoping, hopefully I, I'm doing that, but you can call me out, you know, if, if I'm not. So. No, dude. And I love, um, I love the uh, what you started doing with highlighting two people a week uh, because it's and what's funny is there are probably people out there that look at that and, they, you know, they think there's some agenda there and there, there really is no agenda there. Right. It's just a highlight like this week was Tyler and uh, Wes, like awesome dudes. And Wes, you said you're going to get on my calendar and we're going to have a conversation. and You haven't. So I'm calling you out right now. I'll quit being a punk and let's talk, but I should probably just call him. I should take ownership and just call yeah, him. Right? That's what I'm going to do today. He doesn't know it because this hasn't come out yet, but I will, uh, I'll call him today. But, but the, you know, just the, they're just awesome dudes and, and there's no, um, there's and, no and reason people, behind And people it. will get value out of knowing those awesome dudes, right? Heck yeah, man. Just like we have, right? Yeah. So why wouldn't you want to share or highlight them? And, 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 you know, yeah, and that's the thing I'm gonna have to come to grips with the social media thing is or not is that it's it's built to for people to highlight themselves and and do these things and there's some good there's a lot of good in that I'm not disparaging it um but there are opportunities to highlight others and I think that's I think it's awesome dude so 
um, no, I, 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 uh, well, and, and this, that it. comes, that comes directly from the book ego is the enemy. This, this cannabis strategy. Like, Hey, LinkedIn can be my blank canvas for other people to paint on. Like, you know what I mean? Like, um, if you think about it that way, these, this social media platform, whatever you choose, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, TikTok. I know you're like a big fan of TikTok. Um, <laughs> Isn't it all dancing? On TikTok? Those, I should I should be into TikTok. Are listening? Um, you should go watch this little section of, of uh, YouTube and watch <laughs> David dance. It's not it's not pretty. It's amazing. Uh, but anyways, canvas strategy like man, highlighting others. Um, but how how much is just that? Those words. How much have they changed your life? Dude, like, totally. Like canvas strategy. I would have never. I would have never completely completely that. changed my mindset on. Right on uh, how I operate. And you stole that from uh, Ego is an Enemy. Ryan and, Holiday. And, Thanks, buddy. Ryan I'm going to get you on. We're, we need to get him on our podcast. Yeah, if anybody sure. knows Ryan Holiday, uh, I would love a connection. Yeah, that'd be great. That would be great. Um, yeah, dude, I, I think that, the, the you know, the, the power of other people's ideas and, the, and just acknowledging, like, look, just be humble about it. Like, you don't know a lot specifically you you like you don't know a lot right that's true and so as people feed you you know more and you have you can implement or not i don't agree with everything i read some of it's you know is is whatever do i want to be anything like steve jobs well that'd be an unfair statement to say no but personality wise no uh the way he treated other people no some of the decisions he made no but the visionary that like I didn't even understand the depth of of his vision, and I also didn't understand the depth of the corrosive nature of his brilliance, matched up with his his just intolerance and his his personality and and who he was as a human being was so like this side was so corrosive that the brilliance it it sometimes was overshadowed, but sometimes. His personality drove what has been so fascinating. I mean, this is what I'm taking from this book. And this is like a 24 hour, uh, 25 hour, I believe 25 hour listen. I'm listening at times two, so I'm, <laughs> it's gonna take a while. But but I've been completely, um, my my mind has been open to different ideas of, of what he did do to people. Maybe could have done it differently, but he challenged them to be better. He made them believe they could accomplish things that they never would have or anybody would have ever believed could be accomplished in the time that they did it and in the in time both uh in length of time like hey we'll create this computer in like six months or in the time like the 1970s and 80s right and making those advancements right. and that part to me is so fascinating to, to because it, it really makes me realize that as a a great leader can draw things out of people that they don't even know that they have in themselves. Mm. And so that's got my brain going like, okay, so how do I do that to myself? How do we do that as a team? Not like him, right? Cause that's not my personality, but, but what are some of the things he did? And a lot of it's mindfulness. There's a lot of Zen with him. And so like, I started looking up, Hey, is there like Zen for Christians? Right? Like, I don't, I'm not interested in like doing, going down the Buddhist route, but is there the mind focus that has a Jesus, uh, focus on it and how do you develop these skills? I mean, it just, it's opening my horizons to other, to other things that are, that are things I would have never, ever thought about. And that's just, it's from a book, right? It's from a book and maybe it turns into something, maybe it doesn't, but, but the idea of the strength of, of focus and, and, uh, um, just, you know, having your mind right I guess I'm not suggesting Steve Jobs' mind was right or not, but I'm just simply saying that his intentionality and how he developed himself, nobody can argue that Steve Jobs was a revolutionary uh, influencer that made huge changes and pretty much defined an entire industry. Like that's just a, that's just a thing, and and he was a big part of that, and so th that's from a book though, a book that I never would have had interest in reading unless it was, it, it, it was stoked by chain reading from a different book that also is fascinating, dude. I, just the business 
it seems like it'd be a boring read because it's just a business and Disney, whatever. Dude, it was fascinating. Fascinating. The ride of a lifetime. Uh, so I'd highly encourage that one as well. Jay Money, thanks for the recommendation. Good book. I have like four other books that I planned on mentioning and we're at like the hour mark, which I knew was going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Well, we both pulled our, our stack of books and I'm like, dude, we're, we're going to have to really, yeah. really refine this. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> but hey, just to, to the last point, though, that we, one thing we did want to hit on is so, so what? Yeah. So what's all this? So, so for you, wh what does this look like as you face this transition, this transition being, uh, out of the Navy? Yeah, I think, um, you know, a lot of people will, will choose to read a book because they need it right, right then and now. Um, and they go seek, uh, which is fine. And, and I do that too, but, but I think, uh, for me, what I've found, and we kind of talked about this beforehand, is is the the more you the more you have kind of it in your in your your toolkit, um, you never know when that stuff's going to come out. You never know when this idea in the back of your brain that you read four years ago that came from a book, um, you're going to need that. Um, and and I constantly have like conversations with people. Yesterday, I had a conversation with with one of our sailors, and she came in for me to sign something. Um, and, and I'm like, I'm, I'm one of those who just like reads over real fast and signs it. And she laughed because it took like two seconds for me to like sign something. And it was an important like designation letter or something like that. And she laughed. She's like, I feel like I could just like, like a kid who could just bring in like my detention slip and, and just have you sign it. And I was like, well, it's, it's the speed of trust. Like, I trust you. Nice. It's like, it like that. Nice. That comes from a book that I read like four years ago, Speed of Trust, St Stephen Covey. And, and she's like, oh, that's interesting. I should read that book. I'm like, yeah, you should. Oh, oh, and here's another book you should read. And so like, you know, just the more stuff you have in your, in your brain, the, the toolkit you have, the better. And so I think, um, you know, the, the, the thought behind it all is, is just read, just continuously read and self-educate. You never know when that is gonna be needed and come out. And, and like choose different genres and realms. You know, I'm reading, you know, I'm reading uh, the, the d devotional. I'm reading uh, self-help books. I'm reading, you know, I read Wild at Heart. It's, it's a Christian book about, you know, being a man. I'm reading. Yeah, you um, need that one. You should probably read that one twice. Yeah, yeah. I've read it. I have read it twice and I probably need to read it the third time. I'm yeah, reading, bro. you know, teaching your children values. Like how to, mm. so like all these different like Christian books, self-help books parenting books, business books, like just read. And, and like, you never know when, when you're going to need that stuff. And, and read books that, that aren't aligned. Yeah. Read books that, that give you the counter, that give you the counter argument. You know, I, I thought, and not to be political at all, but I loved um, General Miley's response to, uh, uh, for those that weren't tracking the, the CNO basically went in front of, uh, you know, uh, Congress and I, I don't even remember who he went in front of, but he went and he highlighted the Navy's reading list and they, they just like this, a couple of uh, um, representatives were just like, were crushing him on the idea of some of the books on the list and critical race theory and these things. And, and, and uh, General Miley came back after the fact and he highlighted, he's like, I read books on Marxism and communism. This is our top general in the military. And he's like, you should read these things. That doesn't make me a communist or a Marxist. He's like, and and as an old white guy, or whatever he said, I think he said as a white, whatever he said, I want to understand critical race theory because it's what our people are potentially believing, not believing, or they're embracing, or it impacts my, our people. So I want to know. And, and so I want to understand the argument so I can have a, an intelligent conversation because there's nothing worse than people coming and spitting out opinions on a book they've never read. Like that drives me nuts. I hate talking religion. I love talking religion. I hate when, and I shouldn't say I hate, but it's a very short conversation. But when someone wants to debate the Bible, my first question is, Hey dude, have you read the Bible? No. Okay. Then what are we talking about? Like right. this is the most silly conversation. Yeah. I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to engage this conversation because you're talking on emotion and I, and I've read it. So like, 
let's have a real conversation once you read it. But but that's the whole idea, right? Like read things that are counter potentially counter to what you even believe. And you might learn something, but at a minimum, you'll at least have a frame of reference from which you can you can solidify your beliefs, whatever they are, or you can deviate slightly and be like, okay, I didn't think of business that way. Like Steve Jobs, I'll just be honest, like, well, I don't know if I could have ever handled someone like that, but I am learning a ton about the power of the things he did. And, and I'm learning, I'm learning a lot from that book. And I'm not a big biography autobiography guy, but I kind of am now because these two have been absolutely two that are autobiographies. They're crazy. They're, they're crazy good books. Anyhow, all that being said, I think you're, you, you know, your transition, that stuff. But one other point I want to make to that, how much from a leadership perspective, how much did she leave that office thinking, oh, Exo trusts me. Yeah. Like, what does that impact? What did you just yeah. put into her bank? Agenda free, right? But you just fed her some ideas on how to, you know, fill her brain with tools. But you also and, and built be a her up yourself, and, and to be a leader, and you built her up, dude. You you told her you trusted her, and now she has a potentially has an obligation to you. From he trusts me. There's some responsibility yeah. there. Which is awesome. You can't that you can't you can't short sell that. Can I can I get a high five? Uh. Hey, what? last thing as we transition, yeah. uh, a couple things Stu and I are both doing. Realtor license, we're gonna be crushing that. Uh, come August time frame, I'm looking at PMP, trying to crush through that, get some certs under my belt uh, to, to to have options when we get out, uh, but also. Whatever we learn from those courses will inevitably be beneficial. Stewie's already gotten his um, brokers uh, or mortgage uh, license. So, hey, like reading, studying, taking action, getting these certifications. We're not just BSing about it. Uh, we're, we're very serious about, about filling your toolkit with these things. Go read some books. Stop making excuses. Be humble. Be humble. Be the Seek most simple wisdom. person you know. Seek wisdom. Uh, be awesome. Don't be dumb. <laughs> be what? a good. Be a good dude. And remember, San Diegans. <laughs> San San Diegans, discovered by the Germans in 1903. <laughs> it all goes back to. Ron Burgundy Ron and his Burgundy. great wisdom and mentorship. <laughs> say, can you say fill your storehouse and run Burgundy uh, talk? Uh, man, I haven't done Ron Burgundy talk for a while, but yeah, I, I'd have to <laughs> put me on the spot. San Diegans. <laughs> San, San Diegans, San, 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 San Diegans. My my apartment smells of rich mahogany. I have many leather bound books. Go for your storehouse and make it a great day. And make it a great day. Hey, share this episode. Go like us. Go like David. Go give him five stars. Oh wow! Yeah, you're welcome. Um, take a screenshot. Tell us, hey, tell us what books you're reading. I think that'd be cool. That'd be awesome. Um, yeah, post something uh, on social media and highlight uh, an awesome book. And that's it. All right. We should, Signing off. <laughs> <laughs> we should end this right now. Right now. I love you. Go read a book. Have a great day. Make it a great day. Goodbye. Thanks for us. Bye.